Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's 1 o'clock, and thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, I think we have a bunch of people on now, so now would be a good time to begin. So good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to this Corporate Needs and um, um, Virtual Startup Pitches webinar that we organized for the universities and the startups that continually work with us to, to, to help put their startups in front of our NSET2 corporate members. Uh, but before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ria Ancheta Adrias, and I am the Director of Operations for NSET2. And joining us also this afternoon is Dr. Glenn Vonk. He is our Director of Business Development and Alliances, and he also used to um, work for BD Tech. So Glenn, hi, good afternoon. Say hi to everyone. Hey, everybody. All right. So we will have um, Q&A by the end of the session. So I'd like to remind everyone that you could type in your questions in the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel if there's anything in the discussion that you'd like to clarify. And hopefully by the end of the session, we'll be able to engage with with, with with you, especially the universities on the call, um, much more in terms of uh, putting their startups in front of our corporate members and see which ones get interest from them and how they could participate in the virtual startup pitches that we've organized this year. All right. So um, let us start off today's webinar by talking about the benefits for the startup. So as mentioned, and you know, it is the title of the webinar. We are, we have been sending out some lists of what our corporates are looking for, and we are looking for the startups to feature in our virtual startup pitches. So before we begin, maybe Glenn, you could talk about, you know, what are the benefits for the startups first and foremost, and why they should engage with us, both the startups and the universities. Thanks, Tria. So I uh, wanted to get right to uh, why this might be important for, uh, for your organization. Uh, first of all, we found that for startups, a lot of them exit, exit the corporates, and we believe then that uh, the better that they can understand and align to corporate needs, the more effective they're going to be in their development programs. So uh, one of the benefits here is just to understand what the corporate needs are directly from the corporates in an evergreen list that the team has been putting together. Uh, this does naturally create attraction to corporates in this alignment, and um, oftentimes uh, it can uh, lead to a startup pitch where the uh, corporates can then view what's going on with a startup and develop interest at that point. Uh, if interest doesn't develop in the pitch right away or the corporate is, is going to be like in a watch and see posture, then there's also a database where we can place a startup uh, where they can uh, continue to survey as their needs uh, continue to develop or uh, they become more and more interested in a certain area. Uh, the final benefit is that NSET2 does have a development program in that a lot of startups are pretty early in, uh, in their development and uh, corporates may not be ready to engage yet, but uh, startups can still benefit from an ecosystem of uh, experienced uh, folks that have developed uh, technologies and commercialized them in a variety of venues uh, and can guide them towards uh, uh, those significant development milestones. I'll just add too that there's a benefit for universities here in uh, looking at their portfolios and trying to decide what to put forward. Uh, the information is also available for them to look through their portfolios and align uh, what they are uh, uh, choosing to be perhaps more uh, energetic around a certain area or a certain type of, uh, of a technology because it, it happens to be hot with a certain group of corporates that uh, that they're interested in. So all those things are possible. Uh, I would also say that um, corporate needs are, are very, very complex and um, there's a lot of benefit to, uh, to trying to explore that. Okay, can we next slide? So uh, just a word about uh, NSET2 Startup Development Program and Mission. Uh, you can see that it spans a continuum here of discovery, development, and funding. Today, we're going to focus more on the discovery uh, part of this process, and that's where we're finding a lot of the startups are at is their early stage and looking for those significant partnerships and investments that can take them really through that early stage development to where they're uh, they're ready 
for significant investment. So next slide, please. So uh, focusing on discovery more, uh, again, we're looking at corporate aligned startups. And for NSET too, that is uh, a necessary hurdle for us to work with startups uh, because we think that's where the, um, the real potential is. And uh, when we find people that are interested in working uh, along those lines, uh, we tend to work really well with them. So uh, one way to do that is to use the uh, needs solicitations wish list that describe the corporate business needs and technology interest areas that can either be for the universities or for the startups uh, and that's accessible online as we will tell you in a moment. Uh, we think that startups from universities uh, are if they're in angel portfolios, are state funding organizations, we don't really worry about where they come from, uh, but uh, all of them can benefit. The, uh, other part of this, as I mentioned, is to package and present them in virtual pitches to corporates for corporate investment and strategic partnerships. So the virtual pitches are very efficient for the startups because they don't have to travel and uh, they can do this online. It's also very efficient for the corporates. So I've lived more of the corporate life and trying to find startups that are aligned is a pretty difficult process for corporates. And the reality is that everybody's resource limited. Uh, Corporates can't visit 150 universities across the country, even though there are really interesting things at those universities. And universities uh, uh, can only cover so many corporates as well. Uh, you can't visit everybody. So the virtual uh, platform allows people to talk in an efficient way and see what's happening. And then uh, the doors open really to extend the relationships in any direction that, uh, that makes sense. So next slide, please. So um, the wish list of interest areas, um, I think this is, is this yours, Rhea? Oh, yeah, I can take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so, so as Glenn mentioned, um, I think most of the, most of the attendees that we have today have been receiving the list of uh, the wish the wish list or the corporate needs that we've been sending out for for you know for for us to look for uh, startups for our corporate members because as I I think as Glenn mentioned um, earlier we do work very closely with our our corporate members and they send us these lists and what we do essentially is we work with them one on one to um, to understand better what it is they're looking for. So our corporates are looking for startups for many different reasons. Some of them license it out. Others, if they're a corporate venture, um, corporate venture group, um, especially if the startup is at that stage where they could provide funding or invest in the startup, they also do that. Uh, strategic alliances and acquisitions or exits. So again, this depends on what the startup does, where the startup is in terms of stage, but essentially we do look at many um, different uh, stages of startups. We can have startups that are really, really early. Also, we, 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 we have experience of um, having startups that have been around for a couple of years and have already had their, you know, their first round of funding. So our corporates are quite interested in looking um, looking at many different um, companies or many different startups. What I do want to remind, you know, our, you know, our, our university, our university partners, as well as the startups on the call, the corporate needs are essentially a guide for us to, for, for, for you to determine what the corporates are looking for. Like most of the time they are, you know, you may have a startup that may not be a hundred percent match, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you know, our corporates know what it is um, they're looking at. And if it's something that's interested, interesting to them and they did not or they were unable to properly articulate it in their wish list, then that is something that we would, you know, we would show them uh, through the virtual showcases. So that's why we encourage universities to, to, to not over filter, um, you know, the, the submissions that they send to us or for startups to, you know, just try and send us 
um, you know, your 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 non confidential slide deck, so we could take a look and see if you know our corporates are interested. And for those that have been receiving the corporate needs, there is the full list is available on on the website. So I I just want to show show everyone that in case they haven't seen it yet. So we 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 have this in 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 our website and. And anyone who's been receiving our announcements can actually go to this and see what it is we're looking for. Um, some of them are pretty easy. Like we have, you know, we, we have um, technical areas on advanced materials and technology and materials. And I'm sure a lot of universities have this. Biomedical is also pretty easy. But we do have some new corporate needs here that need a little more attention like uh, male wellness, mental and physical performance, as well as, you know, non-toxic lawn, lawn and garden plants. And when you look at these corporate needs, you can actually see most of the, most of the corporates that we have, um, they generally don't want to disclose, but we have a description of who the corporate member is. So this could align um, your search based on um, not just on the technical area, but who's going to look at, um, at at the startups that you submit. So it's 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 actually a pretty easy list to digest. We have it in tabs. Uh, food and nutrition is also pretty important, so you could just look through this. And the fact that they're active searches, it means that you know just because um, just because the solicitation has passed, quote unquote, it doesn't mean that we stop looking. We actually receive or accept startups on a rolling basis so you can send us whenever you have you know a startup in mind or if you have a startup that would like to get in front of the corporates we accept you know submissions on 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 a rolling deadline or a, on a continuing basis so you don't have to worry that much about you know about deadlines that um, uh, that we have published you could just send your startups over whenever you have them ready so the one thing that is really important about the corporate needs, again, you know, we do try to emphasize that it is a guide for the universities to um, to use, and it's good to know that um, that whatever list that we send out, these are what our our our, corp our corporates are interested in. So hopefully, you get to go to our website, look at the look at the list, and see if there's anything there that would be that would be in your wheelhouse or something that you have in your portfolio that you would like to send our corporate members. So Glenn, do you want to add anything more to this or do you want me to move on? Um, how many, how many corporates approximately Rhea, are we uh, mining for needs now? Would you say? Uh, let me say 20, 25 corporates. So okay. it is a, it is a pretty big list for just mm -hmm. for the corporate needs. So we do have other corporates that are also looking at, you know, at the different startups, but the ones that we've worked with for the wish list is around that number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So moving forward, um, we do have, um, we do have the submission and review process. It's pretty simple. Those that have gone through the submission process, like those who've submitted startups to us before, as you know, all we need initially is a non-confidential slide deck. And usually when we talk to the startups or we talk to the universities, we usually tell them whatever slide deck that they have on file that they use as their, you know, in, in their past pitches or any marketing slides that they have is welcome because what we do is we just do an initial review. Uh, the initial review is essentially for us to weed out the startups that are essentially really not a fit. So lifestyle companies, like we've had startups that submitted to us that are, you know, that that operate in, um, let's say, uh, the travel sector or the fashion sector. Usually those startups are not what we're looking for. Um, I guess if you were to uh, put it in the perspective of a university TTO office, the startups that we usually um, need to look at are those that um, that are strong when it comes to R&D, that, that, that have done research in the university, or if it's from an angel group, something that is more of the hard sciences. So that's why the corporate needs is important. So you could see 
um, you could see how it matches up to 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 what you have. So, um, aside from the non-confidential slide deck, and after we do the initial review, we actually emailed the startups back and ask them to complete the startup profile, which is just additional information that is usually, that may not be reflected in the slide deck. So what is your value proposition? What kind of partnership are you looking for? Are there any corporates uh, in mind? What corporates do you have in mind would be, you know, who would be interested in, in what you have? And essentially that, that non-confidential info, I do have to emphasize that we only you know, we, we, we always emphasize that startups need to put in only non-confidential information. So what we do is we package that information to our corporate members, um, both the 25 that had corporate needs and even the, you know, the additional, I think we have an additional 100, 100 plus more that engage with us on a regular basis for them to look at the companies and to, for, to, to market them for, 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 for them to come to the virtual pitches. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to find here are startups that are interesting to the Fortune 500. So after we've, after the startup has completed their profile, we actually, you know, schedule them for a virtual pitch. So we have to make sure that the information is complete. So when we market it to the corporates and we schedule you for a startup pitch, the corporates know what your company is about. Um, also. The one thing that we also do that is not, um, how would I say it, that, 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 that is sort of like related, but not really to the virtual pitches. We also do in-person partner showcases. So conferences, um, like I think for this year, we did global corporate venturing. We did chemical, the chemical venturing conferences. So any startup in our database or any startup that is currently in circulation that's actively engaging with us, we also invite them or they're also eligible to apply for in-person partner showcases. So the one that we're planning for for 2020 is the autumn pitch and play event. So if you're from a university, you know what, you know, what autumn is about and they have an annual um, event where startups are invited to pitch live in front of an audience. So we're gearing up to, you know, look for startups for, for, for that as well. And if you submit through us, as long as you're in the database, as long as the startups engage with us, then you're also eligible to apply for the in-partner showcases that we have planned, not just for 2020, but for the future as well. Um, going back, so how do the corporate needs relate to the virtual startup pitches? I think Glenn mentioned that it's a way for our Fortune 500 corporates um, to discover startups that are interesting to them. So again, you know, we would like to use the virtual pitches as a platform because it's efficient and convenient for the startups. As Glenn mentioned, you don't have to travel you don't have to book a hotel. You don't have to book a flight. Um, you don't have to wear a tie. Essentially, you can do the pitch from your desk. And also for our Fortune 500 corporates, they can um, they can listen to 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 startups from wherever they are. So this platform is a way for us to not just to show the corporates um, what we have in terms of startups, but also for the startups to be able to pitch without um, you know without leaving their desk or without that much of a heavy lift. So we are, you know, we've, we're planning the virtual pitches starting June 5, but this is a series. So this means we, we're, we're scheduling it on a regular basis uh, up to the end of the year. So the deadline that we have for May 17, if you're able to submit startups by that deadline, then we'll be able to review and 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 qualify you for the virtual showcases as the slots become available. So um, we generally show five startups at the time per showcase. Um, and the four main technical areas that we usually do is pharma and medical devices, advanced manufacturing, chemicals, clean and clean tech, and information and communications technology. Again, if you go back to the corporate needs, you'll see that these four main technical areas actually line up with what we're looking for or with what our corporates are looking for. So hopefully you'll be able to 
go through that list and see if there's anything there that you would like to submit to us. Now, aside from the corporates that are in um, that are on the call, we also have a group of people called startup development officers, and these people are responsible. They're they're essentially uh, they essentially work with us, and they're part of the development program. So they also review the startups, and they're also able to provide feedback um, to the startups that are presenting. So there will be you know there'll be corporates and STOs there looking at the startups, reviewing them, and seeing uh, you know whether or not there'll be a good fit for the development platform and also for the corporates if there is interest on their side. So as I said, the deadline for submission is May 17. So hopefully we'll get the you know you'll we'll get your slide decks by then. So you know on the day, just so you know what the startup pitches looks look like. Um, it's a five minute pitch, but we're putting another five minutes as feedback and Q&A from the corporates and the SDOs. So all this will be happening live. Um, after the pitch, what we do is the startups receive aggregate scores and feedback from the audience. So whatever scores you receive and whatever qualitative feedback you receive, you'll be receiving an email from us just to see how you can improve or just to see if um, there has been interest on 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 the other side. So, if there is a corporate interested in the startup and they're interested in connecting, we will actually contact the startup ourselves and organize a conference call with the corporate. But this is at the request of the corporate. So, after the virtual pitches, we. We usually go back to the corporates and see what they want to do as a next step with the startups that they showed interest in. So another thing that that I think Glenn mentioned at the beginning of the call, after the discovery, the discovery part here, we also we have the development platform or the development program. So some startups that come that come to us or that submit to us are generally too early for the corporates. So some of them who think that the technology is really, really interesting and they think that it could be developed further or could be de-risked further, what, we, what they do is they send the startups to us to develop and de-risk the technology. So this is where the SDOs come in. Um, these startups are, are, go through another review and we consider them for the development program provided that they receive corporate and SDO interest. Because at the end of the day, what we are trying to do here, again, is find, discover startups for corporates. And if a startup is too early, what we do is we develop the companies or the startups for them. So Glenn, do you want to uh, uh, wrap up today's session before we go to Q&A and let them know how they can engage? Sure, happy to, Ria. So uh, basically to uh, take advantage of uh, what we've been talking about uh, for startups, uh, they can submit uh, their pitches for corporate review and SDO feedback, and that can be done uh, at the email address shown on the slide here. And uh, the, this deadline is the 17th of May. And then uh, for the universities and angel groups, uh, you can sign up uh, for the corporate needs and encourage your sub startups to submit. And we find that uh, especially for the universities, if you just make your startups aware of this opportunity, oftentimes that's, um, that's very helpful to everybody in moving your startups uh, forward in, an, in a way that's aligned and productive. So uh, we'll look forward to your submissions and if there's additional questions or comments that anybody would like to discuss, uh, we're ready. Okay, thank you, Glenn. So I do have some questions up. Um, let's, let's, let's start with this first one first. All right, can you can can everyone see it? I guess. All right, there you go. My my screen refreshed. If I have startups that don't match anything on the corporate needs, can I still send it to you, Glenn? Do you want to take this? Yeah, I would say um, go ahead and send it, and um, you know let us have a look at it, and um, you know we can go from there. Uh, if it looks, you know, really promising, then uh, we can push it out and see what the corps say from it. So I would, I would just encourage you to to um, be broad in your submissions. And the other kind of related to this is, um, 
if you have a really early stage startup, um, sometimes we get a question about, you know, is it too early for that startup to submit? And my own view on that is it's never too early. Uh, if it's interesting, uh, I know I, as a corporate guy, would be willing to at least have a, you know, a short phone conversation with a very early stage startup that looked really interesting that was doing something that could potentially pay off for us uh, just to uh, kind of point them in a direction and say, you know, at least this is our view of what's interesting for you. So I would, I wouldn't worry too much about stage as far as submitting either. Okay. Um, there's another question here. Will the startups receive any feedback if they do the virtual showcases? So I think, um, yeah, we did mention earlier that since the virtual showcases are live, uh, they will receive live feedback on the call um, after their presentation. So five minutes of, of five minutes pitching and five minutes Q and A and feedback. And after the showcase, usually it's like a week or a couple of weeks after the startup receives an email from us with the aggregate scores and the ag and 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 a summary of the feedback that. Um, that was received during during the showcase. So that's you know yes, you will receive feedback after that. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, the next question: Can angels send your port? Uh, can angels send you our portfolio of startups? Can we also see your deal flow? Glenn, do you want to take this? So absolutely, angels can send us their portfolio of startups. Uh, we're happy to to have them, and uh, depending on how far along they are, then we would have uh, we have a pretty well defined development uh, portfolio that uh, we can plug them into, depending on on what they're interested in, what they're needing, uh, even on the mature end. If it's uh, connections to different investor networks that we may know uh, are in the early stage, access to different experts or people that are experienced with commercialization. So we really span the whole development continuum. Uh, there, so I would encourage that. Uh, in terms of NSET's deal flow, um, I think that is something that we probably uh, hold for ourselves on that, uh, because uh, in part it reflects some of the interest of the corporates. And I'll let Rio comment on that. Yeah. So for so for the deal flow, I think one way that the angels can see the deal flow because um we do have what we call the national angels so if you look at our icons here at the bottom we have discovery development and funding so any startup that is part of the development program um also gets funneled into the national um the national angels so the national angels is an angel network that we formed last year so if you're an angel investor and you want to see our deal flow, um, send us an email because we because we have angels that are actually startup development officers. So that's how they see the deal flow. Um, but you can also send us, so basically angels can do two things. You can send us your companies or your startups, but you can also be a startup development officer. That way you can, you can, you can, you can help review the companies you can look at the deal flow and if you find a company that gets developed to a certain degree and you're ready to invest you can also be part of the national angel network so that's one way for angels to engage there are actually three ways uh for 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 angels to engage with us okay All right, here's another question. If we have a patented technology that aligns well with something on your list, but no startup associated with it yet, is there interest in that from your end? You can start it off, Glenn, and I could, you know, uh, sure. support you if you have questions. Yes, I I think that there, there could be interest. Uh, the things that are important to put in place fairly quickly are, um, uh, is there a management team that's committed to uh, working on the startup? Uh, and uh, are the uh, licensing terms um, clearly defined uh, so that the startup has access to the intellectual property uh, as it uh, as it 
is born and as it moves forward. And those are the things that have tended to slow things down uh, from our end, but if those things are in place, then I think things can move along nicely. Yeah, I, I think in and you know we do have we do have corporates that look at technologies or look at IP. However, if if you need to be developed or need to be part of the development program because essentially it's going to be a really early it's going to be a really early technology because there's still no startup built around it. Um, our startup development officers can actually help. Like one of the things that we help our startups with now is um, like general counsel services. So as long as as long as the the person on the other end, like the one who owns the technology or the the the, the group in the university that wants to build a startup around the technology, has a you know has a team in place, we can actually help that startup create the company, um, and help them through the development program. But at the end of the day, the first question that we usually ask is, is there, um, is there, is there interest from, from, from the corporates on, on our side? So as long as, you know, the person that is, that, that, that has the technology, if they want to create a startup around it, you know, we have some legal, um, startup development officers that would help create that startup, which is basically legal services. Because as we found out, as we develop, you know, as we develop th these startups or engage in these startups, like they have, you know, they have a they have a startup built around it, but it's it's too early. Like they have a CEO and they have a CTO, but they're essentially uh, they're essentially the only people that are part of the team. So our SDOs help them with the general counsel and legal stuff so they could put together, you know, they could help with the corporate development piece of that startup. And that way we could help move that startup forward. So that is, you know, that is the, the one of the things that our SDOs can help the startups with. Um, I, I, I received a couple of questions if there are, you know, if there, if there are fees for, you know, for submitting, for submitting to us, no, there are no fees. So, you know, you can just send us the, you know, your slide deck and, you know, startups are not charged for, you know, for submitting anything to us. I, I just want to, I didn't have to put it on the slide. I just read it here in the, in the questions box. Um, we do have another question. Do startups need to keep reapplying or do you keep their application information? So I mentioned earlier that startups are asked to create a startup profile so that way they don't need to keep reapplying. So if you receive like if you're a startup and you submit this you submit your slide deck to us and we ask you to complete a startup profile then that means you're already in the database you just need to complete the profile. What we usually do is we try to keep it current so sometimes you know in Usually between six to eight months, we contact you again and and let you know if there's if there's anything you want to change. Especially if you're, let's say, applying for an in-person showcase, and we just want to make sure that your information is current. Uh, the startup usually gets an email from us, um, so that way the startups don't need to keep sending us their slide decks. They don't need to keep um, reapplying, and basically, you know, that startup profile will be used to, in case, um, in, in the event that we have new corporates joining our membership. And most of the time we do. So that's why the information is important to keep current. So that's why we should, you know, keep the information current. So when we have new corporates coming in, we have the most updated information on, on, on the startups that, that, that have profiles with us. All right. Okay, so oh, this is a nice question. We didn't cover this today, but it, it, it'll probably be a good. <laughs> it, this is a good question. What is a startup development officer, Glenn? Do you want to take this? Right, that's a great question, and uh, I'd say there's going to be another webinar on that soon, so you can um, really find out more about it. But startup development officers typically are people that have experienced commercializing technology, whether they've done it in a corporate setting. Are uh, as an entrepreneur, or as an investor, any of those uh, 
you know, uh, that have experience doing that can be a startup development officer. Uh, what they do primarily with Denset is they um, uh, help the startup manage relationships to large corporates. And we have seen that that really accelerates the development of the startup uh, to meaningful exits. They uh, do some reporting and they also work with us to uh, evaluate the startups uh, at an early stage when we first receive them. And typically they can get more involved individually with startups and that's a matchmaking process where I think there's a mutual appreciation that the relationship is valuable uh, to each one moving forward. So I would say if you, if you wanna know more about that, um, get in touch with us or tune into the next webinar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to add what Glenn said, so our startup development officers, there are essentially four kinds. Um, and when I say four kinds, these are the, you know, these, these are the, the SDOs that, that usually work with us. Uh, some of our SDOs are former uh, Fortune 500 um, executives like Glenn. Glenn is actually one of our SDOs. So we, we have SDOs that used to work in a corporate, either in open innovation or corporate venture capital. And they, you know, they're they're part of our SDO group to 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 help develop uh, the startups and have that corporate background um, as as part of their experience. We also have serial entrepreneurs. So these are people who have created startups in the past and you know have exited their startups and they want to use their experience to help other startups develop. Uh, the third kind of SDO that we have, and I think I mentioned it earlier in the Q and A, are um, active angel investors, so they are also essentially part of the National Angels as part of the National Angel Network. So they not only provide, uh, they not only provide the you know the expertise because they look at so many startups, but they can also mobilize funding for the startups that go through our uh, development program. And the third kind, uh, the fourth kind of SDO that we have, and I think I mentioned it also earlier, are um, startup attorneys. Basically, they provide uh, legal help to startups, especially the ones that are just starting or the ones that are really early and they need help with their corporate development piece. So those are the four kinds of SDOs that we engage. And usually for startups that go through our development program or qualify for the development program, um, we, you know, we, we, that's why the virtual showcases are important because we have the SDOs there to look at the startups also to see what's are eligible for the program, which ones would be, you know, uh, good to be developed, especially if there's a uh, corporate interest. So, you know, going forward, these SDOs, depending on what the startups, the startups need, um, become part or become um, essentially our advisors to the company and they help. Uh, the startups uh, develop their 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 company, develop and move it forward. So those are the those are those are essentially the you know the the SDOs that we have. Aside from that, the SDOs also help the startups with their milestones. I think I failed to mention that earlier. So our corporates, when we work with them, especially if they are interested in the company, they are encouraged to provide milestones to the startup. So that way the startup is not developing themselves blind and our SDOs are there to help facilitate uh, the fulfillment of the milestones um, for the startups to hit when they are part of our development program. Okay, I think we have, oh, I think we have one more question and then we can wrap up. And all the other questions that I haven't covered, you know, I'll try to get back to everyone via email to see if I could, you know, if I could, if I could provide more information, uh, uh, you know, th through there, because I think we're running out of time. Um, and here's the last question. So on your slides, you had development and funding. Can you describe, Glenn, do you want to cover this? And maybe we can wrap up after. Sure, sure. So, uh the discovery process is what we're focusing on today. Uh, it's where we find most of our startups are at, uh, in that they're at an early stage trying to develop the, the meaningful relationships with corporates that are gonna take them to a place where the interest is sufficient to warrant additional funding and investment. Uh, usually in the early stage, 
there needs to be some development in terms of framing up what the technology development plan is, the management team, what are the early milestones that um, make sense for that uh, startup to really move the needle for corporates. And if we can engage the corporate in telling us what that is, and that, that also is really important early on. And uh, often early stage funding uh, can be uh, public money available from states or uh, as part of SPR or other things. There's uh, different kinds of venues for that. Moving into uh, bridge funding, uh, larger SBR grants and state grants. Uh, all of that in that phase, really wanting to position that startup uh, in a way that um, when they go for private money, that it's gonna really make sense uh, to make that investment. So uh, the keys to that we found are having the right people involved in uh, that is often a challenge, finding right management and finding the right experts to, uh, to guide that startup to where they uh, really can succeed. That's what the SDO network is all about. And uh, being able to match uh, people up that can work together efficiently and, and move things along quickly. So that's the development piece. And then the funding piece, as Rhea's mentioned, uh, is the angel network and the other investor networks that we're aware of that um, actually are quite interested in deal flow coming out of, uh, of NSET too, because of all the things that we've described, they know that corporate alignment and early involvement is going to really uh, augment the probability of success for a startup that they're going to invest in. So all this kind of naturally leads to a, a good situation with respect to funding uh, when the startup really starts to, to move forward. All right, so I guess, um... I guess that's all the time we have today. And, you know, I just want to remind everyone that, you know, for startups, any startups that we have on the call, that you can submit your non-confidential deck to us um, directly through submissions at nset2.org. Um, the deadline for uh, this batch would be May 17. Uh, for universities and angel groups, uh, you know, we'd like to encourage you to uh, sign up for the corporate needs if you haven't yet. And of course, encourage your startups to submit. Um, all this information I'll send out in the follow-up email just to make sure you have it in your inboxes. And you know, hopefully we see your startups come through and we'll be able to, to, to schedule them for, for the upcoming virtual showcases. You know, and just I think Glenn mentioned it a couple of times there that there will be a startup development officer webinar on May 15. That's next week at 1 p.m. Um, I'll send you I'll send in the email the information on that. And we have an upcoming webinar that we haven't scheduled yet. So watch out for the announcements. So it's about it's a startup development legal webinar. So the stuff that I mentioned earlier about the legal services with um that are part of the development program with our startup development officers. We'll talk a little bit more about that. You know, what are the issues that startups usually um, encounter when it comes to forming their company? What kind of legal help will they need? Um, what are the pitfalls that, you know, startups usually are not aware of that they need to be aware of? So that webinar will cover um, those kinds of issues. So hopefully you guys can make it there then. All right. So before we close, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. And I'll send out the information via email. Please expect it, um, you know, in a couple of days. And for the ones that, you know, for the questions that we had that, 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 that haven't been answered, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll send out an email. Um, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, to answer your questions. If you need anything else, you know, you know where to find us. We we have our email on our website and, you know, we'll be happy to help. All right. So thank you, Glenn. And thank you everyone for joining us. So we're looking forward to, you know, to speaking to you guys again soon. Yeah, thanks. Um, look forward to seeing your startups and, uh, and working with you. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.